All right, welcome back to the channel. I want to show you guys a few tricks with the relight tool. Let's go over the node tree real quick. I have three nodes. So I just took our first node here and made two serials. You're going to connect the green output into input one of node three, and then that output into the timeline in. And then on your second node, make a copy into input one. And you're going to feed that into input two of the second node and add your alpha output over here. Then from your effects library, you're going to search up your relight tool, drop an instance on node three and node two. And I'll show you why we do that. So let's jump over to node two. There's a relight tool. You're just going to check output surface map. And that's all this node's going to do. And you can control how the surface map is interacting on this node. And then on node number three, under the relight settings, change your surface map to use input two. Normally it's on use internal. Now let's go over the tools. By default, the relighting map preview is on, so let's turn that on. And as you can see by this image, this is what it's receiving. So let's go back to node two and we'll reset it. So anything that's got like a contrast to it from light to black is perceived as a shadow. So let's bring the highlights down a bit on this node and maybe bring up the shadows and maybe raise the gain a little bit. Then we'll go back to node three and we will take off the relight preview. And now let's go over the tools. You don't see the tools underneath your preview window here. Click on open effects overlay. And now we're under the directional tool. So as you can see, Look at the shadows that are being cast on our subjects as we move this light around. So think of this as just a spotlight coming from in front and you're changing the angle with the center of this tool. So it essentially is going to be like, it'll have a little bit of lighting change, but not much. And then if we go here, you can see that drastic difference right there. So this is getting all of its mapping info from our surface map. From Let's try the other tools. You do have some parameters here like brightness and contrast that are still active. Glossiness actually can make some really cool effects too. Uh, we'll get into more of that as we go down. Let's just go over a couple of these tools quickly. For the surface, you basically have a point that you can land. So if the beam was hitting here and then you have how far away the light source is. And then with spotlight, it's kind of like both of these where how big is the spotlight? What angle is it coming from? and how wide is the beam with these tools. So pretty flexible on all these tools. And then if you notice, we have a lighting position and we have a source follows effects tracker. So if you had a motion clip and you wanted to track something to some on-screen action with that node selected and that relight effect added, you can go to your tracker in the middle here and choose the effects tab. Normally it's on window right here. But you go effect and then you'd click this little arrow in the bottom add point tracker and you'll get this blue crosshair right here. And you can attach that to wherever your action is and then track it forwards and backwards through the shot and your lighting would move with the subjects. And I wanna show you that on the secondary example I have here. The same setup, but I wanna show you like an example of what you could do with this tracker. So let's go to node three here. And I only have a single frame, but you can imagine if this was a motion clip, and where we're going to reveal our subject like this, you could fade it on like this and then track it to the center. Might be a cool way or like a car reveal, something like that. So you could always key something from a different direction instead of just fading up from black. So you can also do that with the surface follows tracker. And then we have a couple input surface map parameters. You can rescale over saturated, sort of inverts the high and the low. And we have an inter reinterpret left and right. So depending on what sides you want to see and up and down. So with this particular one, I just moved it because it kind of had an overall just basic light coming down and I wanted it a little more like emphasis on the subject here. So it almost looks like you do have another light source, which is pretty cool. And that's a brief overview of the relight tool. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.